hi, I'm Jane Fennell. Um, I'm a member of Langley Saxon Broadcast, which is our morning news show. And we have put together a panel of some of our upperclassmen to talk to you and answer some questions for you to help your high school transition be a little bit easier. So let's start introducing them and starting with Kate. Hi everyone, my name is Kate. I'm on the Langley dance team. I'm a rising senior and I'm so excited for you guys to be at Langley. Hi class of 2024, I'm Carly. I'm a rising senior. I'm also on the Langley dance team and I'm a class officer for the class of 21. Um, hi class of 2024, my name's Emma. I'm a rising senior. Um, I'm on I don't know. I did Best Buddies. Um, I was on prom committee, and I also have a sister that's going to be a rising freshman this year. So. Hi, class of 2024. I'm Kennedy, a rising senior, and I'm on Langley Track and Field, and I can't wait to meet you all. Oh, what's up, guys? My name's Ellison. I'm going to be a, a senior next year. I'm the treasurer for the class of 2021, and I'm captain of the swim and dive team. Hi, I'm John. I'm a... Uh... Rising junior, um, high class of 2024. I'm on the uh, Langley Swim and Dive team. I am one of your drum majors for marching band this year. Well, I was, I was supposed to be. And uh, I'm the sophomore class uh, secretary. Uh, what's up, class of 2024? Um, my name is Grant Reed. I'm going to be a senior this year. And uh, I'm on the football team. And I'm happy to share my uh, experiences at Langley with, the, with you all guys. Hey, guys. It's, uh, this, I'm Kelly Chin. I'm going to be a rising senior and um, part of the Langley golf team and I'm um, hoping to help you guys out um, for next year. Hey guys, I'm Leland. I'm mainly involved with uh, musical theater and choir departments at Langley and I'm an international thespian society officer and uh, just really excited to get this going. Okay, so now that everyone has been introduced, um, let's start with the questions and we can just sort of try to see how it works, just if you hear a question and you want to answer it, then just turn on turn on your mic and start talking and we can see how that works out. So our first question is, what are some differences that you have noticed between middle school and high school and how did you help yourself transition? Okay. I would say the major difference for me was like, Langley is a much bigger school than Cooper or the other middle schools. And I would say the building is a lot nicer. So it's it was a lot um, happier for me. And I found that I liked um, all the teachers and the community at Langley much better than I did at Cooper. I mean, uh, I would say the biggest difference for me uh, was the freedom, um, you know, especially with uh, distance learning this year, it's gonna be a lot, a lot of self-oriented uh, stuff like assignments and projects. So, you know, in middle school, we get your, you get your teacher like reminding you and you got then to remind you to put stuff in your schedule. Um, but with distance learning this year, you're gonna have to be on your own and be dependent and make sure you're keeping up uh, with your own assignments. So I would just say like the freedom overall and uh, that could be good or bad. Uh, definitely like responsibility. Like you have a lot more things you have going on. You have to plan a lot more, but you also, with that responsibility, you have a lot more opportunities for interacting with others and doing fun things across the school. So another question would be, if you are struggling in school in any way, if that's socially or like in sports, you're having trouble balancing all your different activities, or if you're just like feeling like you're getting really overwhelmed with like assignments and stuff, what are some ways that you have found are good places to look for help? And like, how can you find help? Um, tried to find a teacher that I had a really good relationship with and they normally like guide you and mentor you so I've always found that super helpful but we also have really great counselors at Langley so if you're feeling overworked or overwhelmed going to visit your counselor or maybe even emailing them is like a really great way to like try to fix that. Um, I think like a great opportunity if you're struggling socially is to involve yourself in a lot of like extracurriculars like there are a lot of really good clubs at Langley which obviously is going to change a lot this year because distance learning but I found that like 
I didn't really do any clubs freshman year and I, I do regret it because when I started joining them sophomore and junior year, I had a lot of fun and I got to meet a lot of people. So Freshman year, I took linked honors um, history and English and being around the same people all the time really helped me make new friends because I didn't go to Cooper. So when you're like surrounding yourself with or even just in your regular classes, like don't be afraid to say hi to those like that are around you because everyone's always really like been welcoming at Langley. So if you just like open yourself up to the people that you see in like a lot of your classes because majority of the time you will have some of the same people I think that's a good way to make new friends and like not be as overwhelmed with like the social scene and to me if you're struggling academically if you feel like you're having trouble juggling both all of your schoolwork and your extracurriculars that you may be doing you can feel free to just kind of talk to your teachers and tell them about what issues you're having because for the most part, your teachers want to see you succeed, so they will be accommodating to whatever you need. They will they can maybe even push back deadlines if you're having trouble meeting them, or maybe your extracurriculars can be more accommodating. So if you're just brave enough to just kind of ask for help or just really admitting that you're having issues in some places, then the, for, we'll try to work around it, and it'll be it'll work out for you, hopefully. Uh, and I would say to bounce off what Leland said, uh, Saxon time is going to be a, a very valuable tool. Um, like if you're falling behind with like uh, like assignments and stuff and projects, like you should use Saxon time, uh, like to ask teachers some questions or maybe you have a test that you're struggling and studying with and you want to uh, study with them for that. But um, I would say Saxon time is a is a great tool you can use to, um, you know, to catch up with assignments if you're falling behind. Thank you so much. That was all very good advice. So um, another question would be, what are some of your maybe like not classroom related, like favorite memories from Langley? So like spirit events, sports, clubs, like all of that kind of thing. I think one of my favorite like sporting events has definitely been the McLean basketball game, just because like everyone gets so excited and the energy like is insane. Like we're all there, like cheering on the players and like, it's, it's just so much fun. Yeah, I was going to say basketball games and football games, uh, home games are definitely stuff you don't want to miss out on. Um, I'm definitely realizing that now that I'm going to be a senior and this is our last season for that. And um, you definitely want to make the most of all of it because it'll go pretty quick. And uh, that also goes for like school dances, homecoming and Sadie's and prom when you turn into upperclassmen. But I def definitely recommend uh, involving yourself in all these sort of like social activities because it'll make your high school experience like a really great time. And even amongst like some stress you may have like in the classroom, but. Um, bouncing off what Allison said, I would definitely go to the football games, even if you're not a big fan of football, because um, everyone's there and you also have other things like marching band, cheerleading and dance team. It's just a big social event in total, even if you don't like watching and you don't have to stay the whole time which is really cool yeah i was just gonna say um i said this last year at the panel but even if like you don't go with like the big group and you get the party bus like going to the dances is still like really fun like we always have a good dj we always have a fun theme there's a lot of effort that goes into the decorations, so make sure to <laughs> to compliment them but no, going to the dances are definitely fun, whether we have a homecoming or not this year. Like, if there's an opportunity, definitely seize it. <laughs> yes, and sort of as a piggyback off of that question, where we're talking about all these like amazing like football games, dances, stuff like that, like with coronavirus, like we don't know if we're going to be able to have that this year. So what do you guys think? some good ways to stay connected to your school community would be like while we're still in distance learning and we can't go to all these sporting events and stuff like that well one thing i might suggest is in your classes maybe on the first day when you like introduce yourself like have some icebreakers in your first classes because you guys are freshmen that's probably what you're gonna do um uh, maybe like i don't know like type in the chat on like blackboard collaborate or whatever software we use and like hey like you guys want to make like a group chat for like the class so we can talk about stuff and because i know for a fact like 
Uh, a lot of my friends from like a bunch of my classes like to make group chats to like discuss the homework sometimes or stuff like that. Maybe like uh, discuss like due dates, sort all that sort of stuff like that. So that's one way you can do anything. Um, and for extracurriculars, like I'm sure it's like pretty much the same, like the same across the board. But I know dance team has been doing some like Zoom conditioning and stuff like that. So if you're like really interested in doing something like crew, for example, or theater, like I'm sure if you reach out to someone like an upperclassman, like we're a hundred percent willing to give you information or even just like FaceTime with you guys and tell you how you can get involved without being in school because everyone's in the same boat here, even the seniors and the freshmen. So we just want to do as much as possible to stay connected. Yeah, I would say to just, you know, stay engaged in class and uh, don't be shy to, you know, do something new. Um, don't be shy to, you know, go out there and talk to the class. Um, you know, that's, you know, one way to, to make friends. So, so I'd say definitely, you know, it's just stay engaged and communicate. That what is one mistake that you think you made as a freshman, either like socially or in like clubs or academically? And how would you fix that if you could go back in time and go back to your freshman year? Well, I would have definitely tried to put myself out there more because when you make that transition from eighth grade to freshman year, you're thinking, oh, I'm kind of nervous. I don't want to talk to new people. I just kind of want to stick to my friends that I had in middle school. And that's kind of a mistake I made at the beginning. So when you do that, you don't really grow as much. And Langley is like such a, so much bigger than Cooper. It's, you don't, there's so many more people there. There's so many more great people that you can meet and be friends with. So definitely, even if it's, you're trying to, even if it, you're going outside of your comfort zone, you should definitely try to talk to people because most of the time people will be nice to you and then you'll find yourself with a lot more friends and, and then high school is suddenly a much more enjoyable place to be. So definitely do that. Yeah, this is kind of piggybacking off of what Leland said, but like, I think getting involved in the community at Langley is a really good idea. There's a really, there's like just so much you can do. And I would say like, I did volleyball freshman year and I met one of my best friends and it's just, there's a lot of people that you think you know, but you don't really know. And there's like a lot of opportunity to meet new people at Langley, so. I think my biggest regret was not going to any of the dances or like that many football games or sporting events freshman year. and. I went every year after that and I really regretted not going freshman year. It's so much fun. Like everyone was saying earlier, like the environment is just like such a fun place to be. And I really think that if we have it this year, like definitely go to those things because they're just so much fun. And I really regret not like using that time freshman year because you have so much fun. I played two sports. So like the biggest thing for me was time management. You know, I would usually just like go to practice, you know, I'd be tired and I'd be uh, just go to bed after. Um, but like for time management, I would just like, I would fix like doing my homework and assignments early, like for practice because coaches, especially if you're a student athlete, coaches will give you like 30 to 45 minutes before practice. So you could get that studying your homework time done before then. And, um, you know, after practice, you're going to be tired. So, you know, like do whatever you need to do, take a shower, get a snack, and then like get right on your homework. Because for me, I would just like take a shower and then go to bed because I'd be really tired after a long school day. Um, but definitely like get that study time in because it's, you're going to fall behind, especially like for those long hours as a student athlete. So time management for me was a big mistake. Uh, one other thing that I learned uh, from freshman year that I didn't really do, sorry, Carly, um, but uh, is introduce yourself to your teachers. And especially this year, given uh, COVID-19 and stuff like that, it's going to be a little bit harder because it's not in person. So make a point to like, send an email if you're confused about the homework. Don't just go through the motions because the teachers are there to help you throughout the year. And I think that's like a really solid piece of advice. That's probably one of the best things I'll tell you is to um, kindle relationships with your uh, teachers and stuff like that, because they'll help you a lot. I would say my biggest mistake was probably not ch challenging myself enough academically in like freshman year. Um, I think, uh, like everyone says, like your junior year is your hardest, but you should like really try to build a solid foundation your freshman and sophomore years so your GPA can be really like as high as it like can be. And I think that's a mistake I made. I think I kind of underestimated how much work I could handle. So that's something I regret.
So going off a little bit about like what Tristan said about this time management, there are like so many opportunities you can take, so much stuff you can join. And like you may end up like um, overloading your plate a little bit. So how are some, what are some techniques that you guys have found are really helpful to stay organized and stay on top of all your responsibilities and sort of like manage everything that you have going on in high school? Um, definitely use a planner. I think my planner has gotten me like all the way through high school, just being able to plan stuff out over multiple days. Like, let's say you have an essay due on this Friday. You don't do it all on Thursday. You do a paragraph Monday, paragraph Tuesday, paragraph thir Wednesday, paragraph Thursday. Just having the skill to manage your time well and be able to systematically make a schedule. Yeah. So it's what I did my junior year is I, I knew that junior year would be a lot of work. So I tried to try to stay at least on time, if not ahead of all my assignments, because if because I was doing theater and rehearsals were like after school all the way till eight o'clock at night. And then you get home, you eat dinner and then it's already nine o'clock and you you need to go to sleep soon. So, and I know like people, like people on the football team or dance team have long hours like that too. So just try to utilize all the time you have, especially Saxon times, like what Grant said earlier, use your Saxon times to maybe catch up on work you didn't do the night before. And hopefully you just right from the beginning, just try not to, do more stuff than what you think you can handle because just be smart about it and and freshman and sophomore years it's still like you still have work to do but it's not as much as junior and senior year so maybe use those two years to find a system that works for you and then you can by the time you come to your junior year it's more trial it's like more thought out and then you can execute it better I like don't want to be like the person that's like oh like I planned out all my assignments like I wish I am but I'm just not like I have, I like wait to the last minute and then I freak out, but I just have to find people that I can like hold accountable. Like I find someone in my math class and my English class and like I can text them and they can text me and like remind each other about assignments and like ask for help. And that's really helpful, like especially with it being online, like finding someone that you can be like, oh, did you remember to do this? Just so that you have like a little bit of a mental note, but that's just something that I've tried to do because I am a little bit of a procrastinator, so. I would say like something that's really important and that helped me a lot is especially for big projects because every year you have a couple of like big projects that will take up a good portion of the year and I think one of the most important things is your teachers will like help you to kind of set a timeline but it's really important for you to like and it's kind of hard but just to open it up look at what you have to do and figure out how much time it's going to take you because that's one of the most important things for me was trying to deal with big assignments as well as like your everyday assignments. So I think it helps just to plan it out a little bit. Sort of like going along with that, like with in school, like learning, it's like sort of easier to see like a timeline and like see what's going on and stuff. And then with distance learning, it's like a little bit looser and a little bit more difficult. So what are some tips that you guys have for staying motivated with distance learning because you don't have those like traditional milestones to look forward to. Like you don't have the, the football game on Friday to get you through the week and stuff like that. So how have you guys found ways to make distance learning a little bit easier? So what Allison said earlier about group chats, like I think that's a really good way to have like a, a lot of people around you that are also like, we're all in the same boat. Like it's not the best situation. So just, like having some people outside of like the virtual classroom to talk to and keep up with like those classes will probably definitely keep you motivated and remind you because I know like it's kind of difficult to stay motivated when you're like doing class in your room or in your bed. I was going to say, I think one of the nice things about like being distance learning is that you can pretty much do school wherever you want. So it might be nice to like go outside or to like, like maybe like plan something nice or like a nice environment for you to do your school in. Uh, to go off what you guys were saying, um, you know, with distance learning, you know, it's on your computer. So like I'm in my room right now, uh, but like when you're uh, going through distance learning, you're gonna have like a computer by your bed. Uh, my advice, uh, the advice that my programming teacher, Mr. Cox gave me was that uh, put your computer like in an office somewhere. Don't put it in your room because 
you're not going to be motivated to like listen in class or pay attention to what the teacher is saying and like uh like with homework and stuff so my advice would be to like take your computer put it in an office somewhere or put it in like the dining room so that you have to like get up and go somewhere like you are in class like you have to get up out of your bed uh and go to, and go to class so uh, that's what, that would be my advice, just to put your computer somewhere else in the house and not in your room uh, because you won't be as motivated. Another yeah. thing uh, I'd like to add, uh, sorry, Kelly, um, is like uh, try to get on. Like I know it's totally different being at home and not having like, like to go into school and stuff like that. So you'll end up like staying up later, like on your phone, like watching TikTok or something like that. Um, one thing I'd recommend is just like get on a schedule and start like creating healthy habits for yourself and just like overall just work on yourself because this is a time, yeah, your social distance. So you can really focus on yourself, go to bed early, wake up, maybe like, I don't know how it's going to work, get homework done in the morning or something like that. Um, like the, on the days you don't have class and then really you can just uh, yeah, just get healthy habits and stay on the schedule because even though you're not in school and not obligated to do um, a lot on your weekends, it's, it's really important to stay healthy during these times. So, Yeah, I was going to say basically exactly what Ellison's going to say. Just, you know, make a schedule for yourself. Um, obviously, you know, I don't want to stay up too late because, you know, we still have class, get, still got to stay focused and all that. So I would say just stick to a schedule and, um, you know, that'll definitely help you stay focused in class. I would definitely try to plan stuff for yourself to like look forward to during the week. Like, oh, maybe over the weekend I'm going for a camping trip or I'm going to hang out with my friends somewhere or do a Zoom call. Like try to plan stuff that you can work through the week for. Thank you so much, guys. Those were like all really like helpful. And I think a lot of this stuff is going to be super, super beneficial to our freshmen. That is all the questions that I have. If anyone else has anything else to add, maybe any tips, something that like I hadn't touched on, or like just anything you've been wanting to say, please, by all means, go ahead and say it. We would love to hear. Um, I just wanted to kind of like send out a reminder, because this isn't just for freshmen, this is just kind of for all four grades, but like, even though we're online, like it is a first impression. So like make the most of it. And remember that at one point you probably will have to meet your teachers and classmates in person. So don't hide behind your screen, like, you know, voice what you think and participate in class as much as you want. Like I understand some people are a little bit more like shy, so they don't want to like put themselves out there, but you know, turn your camera on and like get ready in the morning and, you know, make the most of it, even though it's not the best situation. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, one thing I was going to add, and I actually kind of want to stress this is last year when we were doing um, online learning, everyone like had their cameras off and it was just like kind of boring and like it was just kind of a terrible time. Um, but this year is going to be much better. And I really want to try to like, I don't know, it would be nice if everyone could put their cameras on. And especially since like, I know I'm going to be doing it because even though I'm not a freshman, I still have new teachers that I want to make a good impression on. And as Kate said, that goes for all four years. So I'm definitely going to have my camera on, even if I'm the only one that has it on. So, um, yeah. And another thing I can't stress this enough is just get involved as much as possible, whether it's clubs or sports. And I know that COVID is kind of stopping you from doing a lot of this stuff, but anything you can find that you might have an inkling of interest in, I recommend just jumping right in and getting involved because I've made some of my greatest friends from like getting involved in clubs and stuff my freshman year, so yeah. Okay, if no one has anything else to add, I think that's it. Um, class of 2024, we are so excited to have you. And if we get to see you in school this year, which we're crossing our fingers, I'm so excited to see you all and in class in online learning.